New York has the fourth largest population of seniors in the United States. And a big concern these days is about their social health. Last year, the U.S. Surgeon General called isolation a public health crisis. A volunteer group in the Adirondacks is trying to help one hangout session at a time. That's today's story of the day. Support for Story of the Day comes from Pearsall Wealth Management at UBS Wealth Management USA, subsidiary UBS AG, member FINRA SIPC, 1 Broad Street, Glens Falls. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Monday, May 13th. First up, St. Lawrence Seaway officials and guests celebrated the official opening of a new $7 million visitor center today in Messina. The new facility includes a museum with 38 exhibits and a three-story viewing platform overlooking one of the two Seaway locks in Messina. Visitors can watch as massive freighters are raised and lowered on their journey between the Great Lakes and the Atlantic Ocean. Adam Tyndall Schlicht is the Seaway's administrator. With two viewing decks, friends, new and old, of all ages, can watch vessels traffic and traverse Eisenhower Lock in real time. This visitor center will continue to stand as a premier location to learn about the rich history of the St. Lawrence Seaway and its legacy here in the North Country. The new visitor center replaces an aging one built not long after the Seaway opened in 1959. It opens to the public tomorrow at 9 in the morning and will be open Wednesday through Sunday year round from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Admission is free. College seniors around the North Country walked across the graduation stage last weekend. There were ceremonies at SUNY Canton, Paul Smith College, and North Country Community College. In Glens Falls, more than 450 students received their diplomas from SUNY Adirondack and the SUNY Plattsburgh campus at Queensbury, including Alexandria Scarcilli. SUNY Plattsburgh has set me up for success for the next chapter of my life. My experience here, as well as SUNY Adirondack, has helped me become rooted in believing the ideals I present here to you today. They have assisted me in continuing to forge a path to greatness, inspired me to ignite my spark, and encouraged me to share it with the world. SUNY Adirondack posted a video of that graduation ceremony online. Scarcilli earned a bachelor's degree in psychology and said she plans to use that degree in a new job at a public library in Saratoga County. Other schools around the North Country have their graduation ceremonies this coming weekend, including Jefferson Community College, SUNY Plattsburgh, and SUNY Potsdam. Social isolation is a growing issue facing the North Country's senior citizens. Some people can go days in their homes without seeing another person, except maybe the person who delivers meals. Amy Feireisel reports on Mercy Care for the Adirondacks, a volunteer organization that tackles isolation with friendship. On a weekday afternoon, about two dozen people, most of them older, crowd into a room at the High Peaks Church in Saranac Lake. They're here for lunch and a program hosted by Mercy Care for the Adirondacks, a nonprofit focused on the social needs of elders. Mercy Care organizes programs like this for elders and what they call friendship volunteers to attend together. Ruth Casson was one of Mercy Care's first volunteers back in 2007. But recently, she's been a receiver of care after her health took a turn for the worse and driving became very difficult. I thought the prudent thing was to not even try. Uh, the safer thing is to let myself be helped. Is that a hard thing to do? It's very hard. From the time I was about 12 years old, I was the supporter. Mercy Care often matches volunteers with elders who need rides, like Cassin. It would be impossible for me to go on living at home. I have a lot of doctor's appointments, and recently I dared to even start physical therapy because they've been so good at you know, getting me to where I need to go. The neat thing about it is I've met so many wonderful people. <laughs> you know. Kesson calls over one of those people, volunteer Debbie McLean. McLean is 75 and recently retired, like many of Mercy Care's volunteers. She started last fall. Um, I was a business owner for 25 years in Lake Placid, and I became a volunteer because I missed interacting with people every day. 
Mercy Care is funded entirely by private contributions and receives no federal or state funding. It was founded in 2007 by the Sisters of Mercy, an international organization of Catholic sisters. Mercy Care organizes a network of about 100 friendship volunteers through the Tri Lakes region and surrounding communities, from Bloomingdale to Keene. Volunteers give rides, plan social events, and hang out with elders one on one. Debbie McLean and Ruth Casson go to a weekly church event together. She agreed to, co- to try anything once, I and then I came back, <laughs> and she decided that it was it was well worth keeping it with it. Ruth is very straightforward, very strong woman. So we're both kind of A personalities, and we just kind of uh, it works. It works. <laughs> Mercy Care's director, Donna Beal, says this sort of friendship and connection is the heart of what they do. It basically, we see our volunteers as what a substitute for what a friend or a family member might do. So we don't do any hands-on health care. It's more like accompanying the person on their journey as they are aging. Catherine Rhodes is the elder care manager. She coordinates visits between elders and volunteers. She says her real job is to play matchmaker, figure out who will enjoy who. One pair goes to the dog fashion show. They go every year. It's their tradition. It's their thing. Um, We have a very serious, ongoing, backgammon competition going with a volunteer and his elder. This kind of social care matters, says director Donna Beal, because isolation has real health impacts. There are amazing statistics on the increase of heart disease, depression, high blood pressure, if a person is lonely and is feeling the impact of that. She says social care will only become more important as the U.S.'s population continues to age in what's been dubbed the silver tsunami. By 2030, about 70 million Americans will be older than 65. That's double the senior population of 2010. In the North Country, over a quarter of the population is already made up of seniors. This is something not to... Um, talk about in uh, negative terms, but how are we going to make our communities age-friendly across the lifespan? From These are good places to grow up and grow old. So I think that's what Mercy Care is really striving for. Crucially, Mercy Care is free, and with local offices for the aging overtaxed, Mercy Care volunteers can be a vital link to social services. For example, Beale says a volunteer might notice an elder is eating less. Then our volunteer might say to the elder friend, um, gee, I noticed there aren't many groceries in the refrigerator. Would you like to think about having Meals on Wheels help you? Mercy Care's unique model of organized but volunteer social care has proved so successful that it's spreading, with similar groups established or forming in Elizabethtown, Messina, Malone, Ogdensburg, and Ticonderoga. These are not satellite projects or programs of Mercy Care, but helping other communities, we share all of our policies and procedures. Elder care manager Catherine Rhodes says their friendship volunteers are often the first to notice cognitive decline or change in behavior in their elder friends. She says having that extra pair of compassionate eyes can make all the difference in the world. At just to, to be able to age in place successfully and, and happily and safely, we're part of a big community and communities take care of each other. Rhodes and Beale say supporting your community doesn't take a special degree or a certain time commitment, just an open heart. Amy Feireisel, North Country Public Radio, in Saranac Lake and Lake Placid. Elders can get signed up for Mercy Care by volunteering themselves or through a referral from a family member or a doctor. The organization does volunteer training and orientation three times a year. The next training is this Wednesday, May 15th, in Lake Placid. You can find more information in the online story at ncpr.org. We have more news there all the time on our website, ncpr.org. Music today by Eddie Lawrence of Moira and Danny Thomas of Canton. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.